according to the 247 composite. So they put together a total <coughs> team rankings uh, list. Uh, so basically, you can go to any year. And Woo. so this football season is 2021. So you go to 2021, and it will show you not just the recruiting class for 2021. It will show you the roster for every team in college football and what that roster composition looks like in regards to five stars, four stars, three stars, the average talent ranking. So it basically gives you a rundown from one to 130 of the most talented teams in the country. If you just believe in the recruiting rankings, which we've had this conversation a million times, the recruiting rankings are valid. Are they perfect? Right. No, they're not perfect. They're valid. They're obviously yeah. valid. Yeah. Uh, so Miami according to this, has the 13th most talented roster in the country. So that should have played better than 7-5, and five, especially against their schedule. <laughs> they weren't playing in the SEC. <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't playing in the Big Ten. They, they should have done so much better than 7-5 and five with the 13th most talented roster in the country. Yes, sir. And that's what I tell people, you know, you look at our roster and like I say that we need to revamp it. What, but what I mean by revamp is have the tough conversation with guys who are not 2021 caliber Miami players. What I mean by that is a slow inside linebacker who can't cover. A defensive tackle who no matter how much we really work on them, has a ceiling that still probably won't ever be a star behind. And we're gonna even we're gonna end up out recruiting and over recruiting this person, doing them a, a due diligence because then they're gonna be a red shirt senior here and they're still a rotational guy. Why? Let's not do that. Have the guards and tackles who haven't taken this program serious, who have been around since 2016, 2017, who are who don't play. They don't care to play. They don't care to make their times. They're just here to go through life, wear the U, wear the uniform, and get a free scholarship. We need to get them out the program. Cornerbacks who are project players who aren't going to play here, get them out. Wide receivers who continue to get hurt, have them sit and have that conversation with them and say, listen, you want to play, you want to contribute, Go somewhere else. That's what I mean. Because for you to say that, that means we're probably in that top 30 to 40 range of blue chip people. Maybe we have anywhere from 30 to 40 blue chip prospects on our team right now for, to be the 13th ranked team. Somewhere in there. A couple borderlines, but for the most part, we got some in there. And then I tell you this the other thing, Mark, is having a fair system. You got a five-star top 10 player in the country and Leonard Taylor on your team. And the guy gets five snaps a game. Come on, man. Come on. That just, that just doesn't make any sense. And he was showing something in those five snaps. <laughs> man, was, <laughs> I'm, I'm just watching the game against Virginia. I think that's the first time he got any kind of reasonable time on the field against Virginia. And I'm not even looking for him. I'm just watching the game. And all of a sudden, I see Leonard Taylor, like, smashing down guards and getting into the backfield. And I'm like, okay, I I, I see him. And I, I've, I've known about him, obviously. But I recognize that, that he's in the game. Yeah. And you wonder why you don't see him again until the next game, second quarter. And it's like, what are we doing here? And this whole the whole thought process of you got to earn your stripes here. God. Well, it looked like he was earning them <laughs> in, in the little bit of time that he got. You would think, huh? You would think. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at these rankings. There are three schools in the country that have more than 10 five stars on their roster. They're pretty easy to guess. Georgia's got 19, Ohio State 16, Alabama 14. Georgia has 19 five stars on their 19 team. 19 five stars. 
Ohio State's got 16 and Alabama's got 14. They're the only teams above 10. I think we only have two. James two. Williams and Leonard Taylor. Yeah. And then you also see um, the, the four-star ratio is not that far off from an Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, and Miami, but it is. There's, there's a gap there. And then it would be interesting to know. We'd have to dive into the average ranking and all that business uh, because the four-star category takes you from about the 40th best player in the country to about 450. So that's a pretty good span of yeah, players. Yeah, so it's a huge so – yeah, you're right. Four-star recruits is pretty big. You know, you could be basically a five-star, or you could be still a, still a good prospect, obviously, right. but not – you know, another 400, 450 spots down from that. So I'm guessing, I, th I think it's pretty easy to see Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, et cetera, that their four stars are way up the list. I was wondering why uh, Oklahoma wouldn't have more than, because when Lincoln Riley was there, I would expect them to have more than 10, five it's stars. Seven. And again, I, I just think it's pretty definitive that the, the college football playoff, there's basically been six schools that have played in the college football playoff. When you really look at it, that have done anything, even Oklahoma, they haven't played well, but they've shown up four times. So in the, in the team total rankings, Alabama's one, Georgia's two, Ohio State's three, Clemson four, LSU five, Oklahoma six. And that's pretty much been your college football playoff. Is that so? Which I, I don't. I've always had that discussion about the the uh, expansion. Dude, it's it's mind blowing to me. I, I I think the four is cool. I was the six for a while, but I understand why it gets a little iffy. So eight eight is okay, but now you got people talking about like sixteen. And 32 and 64 and i'm like oh well God, <laughs> yeah it's just again maybe, maybe my mind isn't just open enough to it maybe i don't i don't it just doesn't make much sense to me i don't believe there's a need to go that far but that's just me Yeah, I would like to see it expanded to eight. Uh, if you look at the matchups for 16, if you're just a college football fan and you want to see good teams play, it it right. looks great. And I've worked on 16-team playoffs. And it sure, do I want to see Auburn and Oklahoma play and, and North Carolina and Penn State play and all these good teams play? Sure, I would love to see more good football teams play. But then you're really looking at a situation where you got to size down the season because you can't have these student athletes playing 17 games and all that other business. So it gets it's more complicated than just we're not playing a video game. We're playing with real human beings. I wonder how long they'll be listed as student athletes, though, Mark. <laughs> with the way things are True. going, I'm for I'm for the NIL. I mean, uh, or name yeah, NIL. I always get that one mixed up with your national level intent in a lie. I <laughs> get those two mixed up, but I'm, I'm for them being paid. I think it's cool. I think it's exciting. Uh, we're in the, the infant stage of it, but I don't think it's been that wild. Texas paying people, you know, their parents' salary is ridiculous, but that's just me. I, I did. We got to figure out somebody to come in and regulate this because if they're going to start the market at 100K, you best believe Georgia and Bama and LSU are going to hop right over top of them at about 200K. And then it just turns into a free for all if we can't, if we don't have a committee or, you know, whatever, just come to an agreement on how to cap it and keep it within reason. Uh, because it could, it could turn into just like the people who want 64 team playoffs, it could turn into madness if you don't 
if it's not regulated. 